my name is Leah and I'm here today to share with you my bookshelf. Bookshelves are kind of very personal. You, you learn a lot about someone watching, looking at their bookshelf. You learn about their likes, their dislikes, what they're interested in, what they're afraid of, what their hopes are, what their dreams are, what um, you just find out a lot about someone when you look at their bookshelf. So today I'm going to share with you, my, 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 my library friends, my bookshelf. You ready? You ready? One, two, three. Yes, and I feel the need to add um, sound effects. I don't know why. It's just something I do. Welcome to my world. Um, so, as you can see, I collect rubber ducks. Um, I have been collecting rubber ducks for a number of years, and um, I have amassed quite the collection. Hi, Tara. Am I sideways again? Hi, Bernadette. So, yes, this is my collection of rubber ducks. I have quite a few of them. I've been collecting them for a number of years. I kind of started collecting them, um, I don't know. I've always liked rubber ducks, and I loved them. And they were just so cute. And I kind of... One, I always wanted to start collecting them. I remember one day I was um, in Target with my sister and she said, and I saw rubber ducks and I was like, oh my God, these are so cute. Someday I'm going to start collecting rubber ducks. And she was like, someday, start now. What are you waiting for? And that was kind of one of those like aha moments in my life. It's like, yeah, what am I waiting for, right? Why do I, why... Do I feel like I, I can't do this right now? What? Just go for it. Just start. So I did. And the, the, the rubber ducks we picked up that day were these little Valentine's Day ducks that had little hearts on them. And some ducks that I have up there, they're lighter colored and they just got polka dots on them. But those were the ducks that I started with. And, um, and then I got a few from the library that we had left over from something that we did and then um let me see um yeah and then like i had mentioned that oh i wanted to start collecting them and a few friends picked up stuff for me like these christmas ducks that i have back here and it just started from there and then i pick up rubber ducks wherever i am if i go somewhere if i go on a trip i look for rubber ducks that remind me of that trip if I have friends going on trips, I'm like, look for rubber ducks. I need rubber ducks and they'll get me rubber ducks. And um, yeah, my collection just keeps growing and growing and growing like all the time. I can't even tell you. Um, my newest rubber ducks um, was during the, 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 the shutdown when everything was closed and we we're supposed to be staying at home. And I had to go to the grocery store because you know, grocery store, Hi, Emily. Um, so I was at the grocery store as a giant eagle and they had like this cardboard display with rubber ducks in it. And I was like, and they were marked down, like really marked down. And I was like, oh my God, rubber ducks. And then I was in a different part of the store and there was a different display with more ducks. And I was like, rubber ducks. So then I just started like running around the store, looking at all the little cardboard display boxes to see what they had in them, see if they had any more rubber ducks. And I got like six rubber ducks that day. So like, you never know where you're going to find rubber ducks. And I got, like, Christmas ducks and Halloween ducks, even though it was, like, the middle of March. But, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter to me because I'll take any duck anytime any <laughs> that I can find. So, um, there are lots of different places where you can find rubber ducks. Um, Oriental Trading is a good place. Um, Amazon sells them. There are a couple companies that do a lot of different types of rubber ducks. Um... There's this company called Celebrity Ducks, and they do different celebrities or characters from movies or TV shows. Like this is Harry Ponder and the Ducky Shallows. Well, I think we all know who he's supposed to be. Lightning Bolt Scar, Wand, Magic Book, Harry Ponder. I think you get it. And here's uh, <laughs> another one. 
Mr. Squawk. Uh, float strong and flourish instead of live long and prosper. He's another one of the celebrity duck ducks that I love. Um, there is this company called Wild Republic. They're the ones that do the ones that I found at Giant Eagle. Some of them are a little creepy. Like, look at this guy. You know, like a scarecrow, but I think he's a little bit scary. But anyway, that's good for Halloween. Um, yes, but I find them everywhere. Um, what else should I tell you about my rubber ducks? Uh, I'll show you a couple of my favorites. Um, this is also from Wild Republic. It's a, a, a giraffe. I just think turning ducks into other animals is hysterical. I don't know why, but it is just like the funniest thing ever. Here's a duck as an octopus. Again, hysterical. Um, how many do I have? Well, it depends on how you want to count. If you're counting just rubber ducks, I have 558 and several hundred that are duplicates that are underneath my desk. If you're counting um, some other stuff, like, because I've got a lot of rubber duck stuff that isn't like actually rubber ducks. Um, if you count all of those, I have 595. This shelf here shows some of what I'm talking about. Um, I've got like this guy who looks like a rubber duck, but he's like a little bouncy toy. Um, this guy is a tea strainer, like he floats around in your teacup while you're making your cup of tea. Um, let's see what else. This guy's a clip. Looks like a rubber duck, but he's like a bag clip. Um, I've got rubber duck earrings that again look like rubber ducks but are not rubber ducks um keychains blingy blingy keychains but my nephew saw this and said tante leah has to have it so i i have several of these keychains um i've even got a chocolate rubber duck this is edible am i gonna eat it it's too cute to eat it's just too cute i have to keep it because ugh, rubber duck. This is a gift from one of my co-workers. I have amazing co-workers. Did I tell you that? This is a 3D printed rubber duck that one of my co-workers printed for me when we had the 3D printer that we borrowed from um, Searles. So thanks Searles. I got a 3D printer. Out. I got a 3D printed rubber duck out of you. Um, I've got a dish scrubby for scrubbing my pots and pans. That's a rubber duck. Um, so if you count all of these kinds of things, I've got 595, very close to 600. Um, so that's exciting. Let's see. Let's see. What? Let me show, a, show you a couple more of my favorites. I've got this one. Um, this is a company, Infantino, which I love their rubber dots. I think they're just like the cutest. Um, this one has got his little umbrella and his little tulips because it's a springtime duck. So cute. Um, Taco Tuesday. This duck is in the shape of a taco. I've also got ducks and french fries and cheeseburgers and hot dogs. You name it, I got it as a rubber duck. Um, this one, he's playing the bagpipes. Like, how cute is that? And look at all the detail on there. I mean, like, that is a really fancy rubber duck. Love that one. Um, also got this one. She's a queen because let's face it, I should be treated like royalty. So gotta have the queen because that's me. Um, this is another duck that I have from that Infantino uh, company. I love their rubber ducks. I really do think that they are the cutest. Um, I like to think that that's a cup of coffee because I love me some coffee. Um, but look at, look at like the detail on that. Look at the sweater. Look at the detail in that sweater. Like the, the ribbing and the, the knit stitch. Like who does that? This is amazing. This is like phenomenal. I love, love, love this duck. Um, do you know who this is? Do you? Do you? The girl with the pearl earring. That's right. Fancy art replica duck. And then... There's this duck. I love her. I love her. She is, um, she's a reader duck. 
I've got lots of reader docs. I'll show you those to you in a minute. And she's reading a romance novel. And let me tell you, I love me some romance. And she's wearing glasses and she's got brown hair. So I use this duck as like my picture in my email a lot of times. Like if you get an email from me, she's like the little picture up in the corner. Bernadette has Pilgrims, a mummy, Ohio State, of course. I have an Ohio State duck, OH. Uh oh. Um, I've got Pilgrims up there. Mm -hmm. And a mummy. I have them. <laughs> so I have those two. Um, I'm always looking for new ducks. I love them. Anywhere I can find them. Um, this duck, check out this duck. He lights up. He flashes different colors. How cool is that? Um, so yeah. What uh what what else should I show you? Let me get a little close up and show you a couple more of my ducks. Um, here is my Christmas shelf. I've got a lot of like Christmas ducks here. Up here I've got, oh, I can't, I'm not good at this. Sorry, peeps. I'm just not good at this. I've got my reader ducks, I've got my police ducks. Um, I've got firefighters and people with umbrellas. Oh, I mentioned my coworkers earlier. They like to do stuff like hide things in with my ducks and see how long it takes me to notice. My firefighter now has a little red bucket because uh, my, my co-workers decided to hide that in there. They also like to hide things like frogs in with my rubber ducks and see how long it takes me to notice. The 3D printed rubber duck also got stashed in with my rubber ducks to see how long it noticed before how long it was before I noticed that he was there. Sometimes it takes me a while, I'll admit, because there are a lot of them, but I also know where everything should be, so I notice when something's out of place. So, um, Mary wants to know if I have any funny stories on how I got any of the ducks. Um, funny stories. Not for most of them, although they will suddenly just randomly appear in my mailbox. Like, I went to my mailbox one day and there were at work and there was this rubber duck. I was just like, that's an awesome duck. Who did, who, who got me that? And of course it was my boss because she's awesome. But yes, so they will just randomly appear. Um, one day in my mailbox at home, I had this set of ducks here randomly appear, the, the fairy tale with the the fairy godmother and the prince and the king and the queen and the, the dragon. They just appeared in my mailbox with like this um, from a from a secret friend or something. I was like, who was that? It took me a little while, but I figured it out. It was one of my friends. She put them there. So yeah, they will just appear. Um, yeah, they do. They like to just appear. Um, for my birthday last year, they got me a pair of rubber duck slippers. So, ooh, ooh, 596. I didn't count those earlier. 597, I have a cup too. 597 rubber ducks. Um, so yeah, they just appear. And so that's a lot of fun. I have these giant rubber ducks, which are just so cool. That was actually a gift from friends. People I told that someday I'm going to start collecting rubber ducks. And they felt... Like, I should start my, my collection sooner. So, um, anything else about the rubber ducks that I should tell you? Well, since you came here expecting a book tour, I thought I should talk about a few books. Even though I don't have them on my shelves here, a lot of these books I do have on my shelves at home. So these are some of those books that I love, love, love. Um, the first is... I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, the Clan of the Cave Bear series by Jean M. All. This is a, oh, this series is old. Um, I think she started it back in the 80s, the, like, the mid to early 80s. And she didn't finish it until just a few years ago. Um, there are six books in the series. And they follow this character named Ayla. She's, it takes back 
takes place way back in time. So, and her adventures and discoveries and the way she interacts with the world, she, she tames a lion. She's the first person to ride a horse. She uh, tames a, a wolf. Like, she is phenomenal. She invents sewing with a needle. I'm like, it's all ridiculous, but I love this series. And every, like, five or six years, I'm like, I need to reread those books and I've really been thinking about them lately so next on my to, to be read list. Another series that I love is Diana Gabaldon's Outlander series. I don't have book one for you here because all of our copies are checked out. Um, uh, this is what is this book five? Drums of Autumn? Um, four? Five. 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 Um, so we have several of her books. This is just the one that we happen to have on the shelf here today. Um, love this this series. There's, um, this woman is a healer of sorts. Um, she accidentally goes back in time, falls in love with a Scottish man, men in kilt, whatever. Um, it's but it's very factual in like the history elements. So there's lots that you learn there. It's really cool. Um, I would recommend it to anyone um <clears throat> well if you like that kind of stuff Let's see what else do i read oh sarah addison allen i don't know if you've read her if you haven't give her a, sh a try she's got like this magical element to her stories i mean there's like real magic in them and they people i don't know just Magic helps out in a way, and it's just a really good story, really heartwarming. There's always some kind of struggle, but, you know, it's it's going to have a happy ending. Um, Maeve Finchie is another one of the authors that I really like. She's Irish. Um, this story, Minding Frankie, it's like a community coming together to help um, someone take care of a kid and it's just really good stories. I love her stories are usually told from like multiple perspectives, which is one of those things that I like. Um, yeah. So it's real, it's a real, um, someone loves the peach keeper. Yes, me too. Um, and the one about chasing the moon. I forget what that's called. Um, by Sarah Addison Allen, the peach keeper. That is a wonderful book, Tara. But I love this. Um, another book that I love is uh, this book, uh, When in Doubt, Add Butter. Because, yeah, butter's fabulous. But um, <laughs> this woman's a personal chef. Uh, her life is crumbling. Like, things are not going well for her. Um, but she always, the thing that she can always look forward to is cooking for Mr. Tuesday. Mr. Tuesday is one of her clients because, like I said, she's a personal chef. Um, but she's never met him. He just leaves her notes. And so they kind of have this relationship, but they just leave each other notes back and forth. And I tell you, I love a story where people fall in love via notes um, or letters back and forth. It's one of those things that I just think is really cool. Um, so, yeah. It's, they, they do fall in love, but that's like not the point of the story. This isn't in the romance section. Um, other books where people fall in love in stories, like letters back and forth, um, Rainbow Rolls, Attachments is, oh, I love that book. We did not have a copy on the shelf. I was very disappointed. I couldn't show that one to you. Um, uh, Simon versus the Homo Sapien Agenda. That's another one where writing back and forth, people fall in love. I just, I love that guy. And this woman... I love her titles, like When in Doubt, Add Butter. Yeah. Uh, chose the Wrong Guy, Gave Him the Wrong Finger. I love that title. That's just, you, you gotta love a witty title. Um, this is another one of those books that I really, really love. Um, one Amazing Thing. And I'm not even going to attempt to give you that author's name. I'm going to just show it to you. Um, because if I try to say it, I will butcher it. And she deserves better than that. Um, yes. So, one amazing thing. This book, nine people are in a, I think it's like a passport office or a visa office, and there's an earthquake, and they get trapped, and like, it's flooding, and like, things are just like, people are starting to panic, and like, it's just all going wrong, and someone says, well, you, to keep each other talking and calm, let's share stories. Tell me one amazing thing about your life, something you've never told anyone else before. 
So they all open up and they share one amazing thing about themselves. And it's just that, that power of storytelling and how that brings us together. It's just, it's, it's amazing. And stories are all over the place. You've got a grandmother, you've got a kid in high school. I mean, they're just like the characters are all over the place and in different parts of their lives. And it's just that coming together via story. I love that. Um, Ready Player One. Awesome. Awesome book. Uh, much better than the movie. I'm going to just say it. The movie wasn't so great. Um, if you want some 80s nostalgia, this is the book for you. Um, I, my sister kept trying to get me for, to read it for years. She's like, Leah. I'm like, I don't like video games. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to play, read that one. But it is worth it. Totally, totally, totally worth it. Um, Jocelyn Jackson. She is another fabulous author. Um, this was the first one of hers that I read, a grown up kind of pretty. Um, these women, there's a little, I feel like there's a little bit of magic in these stories. Um, like this one, they've got a curse, like every 15 years, something goes wrong in their life. In the backseat saints, there's um, like a tarot reading where like it, it tells her future. Like there's the element of magic that I really love. Um, there's some other books with magic in them that I love, like um, Cecilia Ahern, um, her Thanks for the Memories. I love that book. Person gets a blood donation and like suddenly has all these, this sense of deja vu constantly and they can't figure out why. And it's because of the person who gave the blood donation. So really interesting. Um, feed. If you're into, like, we're in the middle of an apocalypse right now, so why not read some apocalyptic fiction, right? Uh, Feed is awesome. It's a, a a zombie story. And again, I was like, zombie story? Really? I don't know that that's for me. But it is. This story is awesome. Um, it's, it's the first book in a trilogy. Feed is the first book. Then... Um, Deadline and then Blackout. Mira Grant is the author and they are phenomenal. It's it takes place like 25 years after the zombie apocalypse like there's been a zombie uprising and zombies are just a fact of life now and it's how the world has changed because there are zombies and um, you know like you know things that you've had to give up and things that you can no longer do now and like you can't have big dogs because big dogs could be um vectors for for zombie transmission and they can they can become zombies themselves so like it's like you know like the things that we do in order to stay safe like all of that is thought out really well like she does a phenomenal world building in this series and i love it i love 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 it um if i'm Reading nonfiction, a lot of times if I'm going the nonfiction route, I like science. I don't know why. Like, I am not, I, I have no talent when it comes to science, but I find it very, very fascinating. Um, the Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot is fabulous, and I didn't feel like I had to completely understand science to get it. It's very accessible even to a non-science person. Um... But it's just, it tells the story of how this woman's cells were, um, her, you know, she had surgery and they removed um, cancer from her body and then like used her cells. And everyone, like every lab across the world has got cells that came from um, Henrietta Lacks and how she never got any compensation for that and her family and it's just it's very interesting the politics of it as well as like her life and what happened to her and the science involved it's very fascinating um <clears throat> another one of the books that i really like is the disappearing spoon by sam keen sam keen writes lots of like sciencey type books um uh this one is the disappearing spoon and other true tales of madness, love, and the history of the world from the periodic table of elements. I never, ever thought I would read a book about the periodic table of elements. Fascinating stuff in here. Like, everyone just talks about, like, it, it's, it's really fascinating. And the Disappearing Spoon, 
there's this joke that scientists like to play on each other where they use gallium. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a metal, um, that's like solid at room temperature. Um, but if it gets up, up to, I think it's 84 degrees, it melts. So what they do is they'd like make spoons out of gallium and then their colleagues would use it to like stir their tea and they would melt in the, in the, in the, in the, in the cup of tea and ruin their cup of tea. They couldn't drink it. Then. But it's like stupid stuff like that. But also like the, the, you know, the scientists competing against each other to be the first one to discover the new next new element. It's just like, it's fascinating. And the stuff that I didn't know that I didn't know, it, it just, I really recommend this book. Um, he also wrote like the violinist thumb, which is about DNA and, um, Caesar's Last Breath, which is about the air that we breathe every day, which is something maybe we should read about right now since stuff is in the air. Um, but yeah, so he wrote, he writes really kind of accessible, funny, it's very witty, like it's really interesting science stories. So that's kind of what I go to when I'm, when I'm reading. And if you want recommendations on any other titles, I'm happy to help. Um, if you want more information about any of these ones that I talked about, I'm happy to help. And my phone is ringing, so I think I'm going to go. It was nice talking to you. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.